Hello friends, I'm Fench, and this is my Model 3 performance. It's Sunday morning, the autobahn is empty, and we're ready to go out for a revised autobahn review. The state of charge is at 87%, so let's see how it performs on a 100 to 200 measurement. Let's go. Well, that's a bit disappointing. With 9.4 seconds, it's roughly half a second slower than my last video. Although I didn't do this run at exactly the same spot, it's still more or less a flat section, and this time we have 10% more charge than last time. Strange. In my last video, I mentioned how the steering felt twitchy at high speed. A few of you suggested in the comments that I try switching the settings to heavy. I'm happy to report that it made a huge difference. Although the Tesla's dead zone still feels a bit different compared to most other performance cars, the heavy setting definitely reduced the twitchiness. It's a significant improvement, so thanks again for the great tip. Many of you guys have also asked about consumption figures for various speeds. I figure with a completely empty highway, we should be able to do some runs keeping the same speeds without interruption. We're going to do four round trips. One with 150, then 130, then 110, and finally one with 90. It's important to note that this highway is situated in quite hilly terrain, constantly elevating up and down. So the figures we'll get out of this test isn't so much comparable to someone that lives in a flatter terrain. The consumption at 90 is almost 40% higher than what I've measured on a completely flat terrain. It would be fun to do a test without any elevation change, but that would mean a full day's drive for me and I'm afraid my career as a YouTuber isn't quite paying the bills for that. Well, actually, maybe I'll get the chance to do it in the upcoming weeks. We'll have to see how things plan out. What a great reason to subscribe to my channel, though. Let's do a few more 100 to 200 runs. This area is still a bit damp from rain, but grip-wise above 100, it shouldn't really make a difference. Don't put too much into this result, guys. Yes, the conditions are a little damp, but perhaps more importantly, this section's quite steep uphill, so even getting a sub 10 run is quite okay. Now, just for fun, let's see how quick it is in chill mode. I mean, yeah, it's still okay, I guess. It's about as fast as a Polo GTI. To be fair, I don't think anyone will be driving in chill mode when they want to go fast. With that said, a Polo GTI is no slouch and is actually faster than most regular cars. Now with our acceleration runs out of the way, let's do some consumption tests. For all speeds, we'll be driving exactly the same route, keeping our speed consistent, besides one brief moment of us turning around to drive back again. We'll start the odometer as we pass under this bridge here, and off we go. It's a little disappointing that Tesla didn't include the autopilot to actively assist at these speeds. Most German cars provide autopilot up to around 210. 150 is still plenty fast, but on days like these, where the highway is completely empty, there's no problem cruising around with something like 180 or even 200. I suppose it's only a problem we have in Germany. 15 kilometers later, we're at our halfway mark. So let's turn around and do the same route back again. I 
I don't want to bore you all too much with the driving, so I'll fast forward to the end, as nothing really interesting happened here. So for the last 31 kilometers, we've been averaging a consumption of 258 watt hours. That's pretty much with a constant speed of 150 in a terrain which is full of shifting elevation. I honestly don't find that too bad. In fact, I might even say that's surprisingly good. I haven't been able to find another test on YouTube where I could verify that the driver actually kept a constant speed for the entire period. Oftentimes you'll have speed limits or traffic all of which would influence the results. Anyways, the odometer has been reset and we're now doing the same route driving 130. At 130, it doesn't feel too different to 150. I still hold my opinion of it being a great highway cruiser, even with the bigger wheels and stiffer suspension. Another 30 kilometers done. Our average this time is 210 watt hours, a difference of around 22% in consumption compared to going 150. Which I guess is somewhat interesting, as the increase or decrease in speed was only 15% compared to 22% in consumption. Anyways, we're back on the road again, this time doing the test at 110. As before, nothing exciting happened. And here we are, 31 kilometers later, and we're at 173 watt hours. And I have to say that this is quite surprising and must come down to the hilly terrain, as we've previously done road trips with almost similar consumption, but traveling at much faster speeds. Now onto our final test at 90. I really hope these figures are useful to someone out there, or the very least, as long as some of you find this type of content interesting. I know that I like seeing these tests myself, but who knows, maybe I'm the only one. Here we are at last, the final run, 31 kilometers at 90, with an average consumption of 146 watt hours. I'll try and make a summary and make sense of all these numbers. But first, let me just do a final 100 to 200 run. Yeah, the lower state of charge definitely affects the acceleration. A couple of seconds may not sound like much, but it's clear that a lot of the power has gone missing. It's still a fast car by every measure. It just doesn't feel it that much, at least not compared to what I know it can do. Enough about performance though, let's take a dive into the consumption figures. Well, I guess it's less of a dive and more of a just listing them on the screen for you to see and compare. What I can't stress out enough is that these figures aren't comparable with other tests you may have seen of this car. They're not even directly comparable with my own previous videos, as everything has been recorded in different conditions. It does, however, establish a baseline for me, as when I'll get my hands on other vehicles, I can do this same route, and then I'll have a direct comparison. Again, please note, the Model 3 performance can be much more efficient than these numbers would otherwise suggest. Like I said, when I hypermiled on a flat stretch of road, the consumption was only around 100 watt hours. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm currently waiting for an interesting piece of accessory. It should hopefully arrive at the beginning of next week. Then I'll do a quick little video for you. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. That carbon trim is so good looking.